Sorry, I'm just waiting for the camera to brighten up a bit. Hi, welcome to my channel, and today we'll be going through my monthly reading wrap up. But the first three is on audiobook, and the last four are physical reads, so let's get into them. First on the list is Edge of Here by Kilichi Okorafor. So I started reading this towards the end of December. Um, I'm the kind of person that if I finish a book in that month, I read that book that month. I, <laughs> I don't, I, okay. I really enjoyed reading this. A quick summary, um, Edge of Here is a short story collection that basically builds a world where black women are loved, where black women are the storytellers, where black women are the centre of the world. Um, but this is a stunning um, short story collection that really explores the theme of black womanhood, black experiences, and she does it in a very diverse manner, especially when it comes to the theme of love. She shows familial love, um, parental love, um, sexual, romantic, very different types, and I really enjoyed it. There was also different types of relationships, interracial, um, polyamorous, queer. It really dealt with a lot. My personal favourite stories are Blue, Broom and Ali Chip. Um, any story where white people are messing around in plantations I will definitely be there okay um but if you want a story that kind of borders on sci-fi and fantasy but that's not really your bag I would say this would be a good introduction into it I think this is a good taste that this is a good feel um now in terms of the reading process there were some bits I just found a bit eye roll just a tinsy bit because it just kind of felt like sometimes I was being um <sighs> I feel like for people who don't read that much and in the most respectful way possible um, and for people who do not have like a feminist politic or do but aren't, I'm a PhD student so I'm into academia so for a lot of these things it was kind of things I'm already used to reading. Now I just didn't lower my rating, I still gave this I think a 4 out of 5 or 5 out of 5 on Storygraph. Um, but these are just my personal feelings regarding the book. I really enjoyed it either way. I loved Councilwoman. I loved Watchers. Watchers was also another fave. I felt like it was very good. As you can see, it's tabbed up. I love how she explored the position of black men in the community, especially intersecting with hip hop. Um, I did find it interesting because I think there was a lot of like... There was a lot of narratives being used by that character that when you see in real life, it's like, huh. Okay, I've come across this before, but yeah, Kilichi, I feel like they, she had in mind, I want to write a book for black women um, that highlights our, like the vastness of us, like, and I really loved it. However, my only, um, in terms of critique, would be if she did a lot more showing and not telling, um, and I feel like also if she had an evil black female character in there, because in every story it just kind of felt like every character was doing the morally correct thing, and me, you guys know me, I love uh, a black female character that's a bit you know, that has a question mark above her head, do you get what I mean? Like, I really wish they explored that a bit more and with the show and not tell thing, sometimes it was like, oh, an internet, and like, when black women say this, it's a bit, and racism, I just kind of felt like, baby, this could be tightly, this could be tightly done a bit more, but this is a debut collection, this is her first book, and she does an introduction, and I am excited for her next book, um, I still gave it a 4 out of 5 on Storygraph, and I'm still holding on to my 4 out of 5 rating, um, I did give it a 5 out of 5, but I felt like, mm, I was being a bit too generous, so I knocked it down to 4, but generally, I enjoyed it, the critiques I gave is if I'm being really nitpicky, so yeah. The second book I read this month was Under Do Jala Trees by Chinenu Ukparanta. Inspired by Nigerian myths and folk tales, Under Do Jala Trees is a coming of age story that follows Ijoma and her developing into a woman and exploring her sexuality or going through that in a time of where Nigeria is going through a civil war. In the book, when she obviously falls in love with a girl and starts to explore that side of herself, she is found out and then she realizes she has to hide this aspect of herself. I absolutely enjoyed reading this. It was a tough read. Like like, there was a lot of words on the page, I'ma say that, but as you can see with my tabs, like, I felt like this book was not only spoke true to my personal experience as a queer woman of Nigerian heritage, but I felt like a lot of people can definitely relate to this, even if they're not Nigerian. I think the theme of religion, faith, self-identification, sexuality, motherhood, womanhood, war, was very, very well put together in this book. And as much as I'm angry at the mother, I do understand the mother's feelings coming from a Nigeria and, like, living in the country and understanding certain things in that time it's like if you don't have a husband 
yikes, you know, you won't be able to survive. Um, and I think that now Nigeria is slowly getting to the point where women don't need um, a man's guidance or following or whatever, or marriage to be themselves or to live in society. Um, but yeah, I, I felt this book, and I love the fact that there was a happy ending. I love the fact that um, Chinelu, because from what I know, I don't think Chinelu is a queer woman. I'm not going to assume because I ain't all in her kitty cat and all in her business, but I'm going to assume she's not queer because so far there's been nothing in the interviews or whatever that I've seen on the internet that suggests that. Um, and I think she did a very good job with steering away from the queer, um, the tragic queer or tragic gay trope. Um, I think there's a, probably a better name for it, but that's just the name I'm going to call it for now, where all these queer characters just end up living one broke up life um, and don't have any happiness. And I think it was very beautiful to see that in the end she was able to find happiness and self-acceptance. Um, I'm really trying to give reviews without spoiling or do a wrap-up without spoiling but generally I enjoyed reading this. I read this within the space of three days. I think this was easier for me to read because I was on a train um, but either way I absolutely loved it. I loved the discourse regarding womanhood. Um, I loved how she constructed the character. I do feel like there was a certain bit where the husband was a bit like is this the same person but you know what Anyone who's read nearly all the men in Lagos are mad, just know that niggas be flipping back and forth and men are mad, so I ain't even gonna hold you, sis. But yeah, I give this a 5 out of 5. This was a brilliant and wonderful read. And I can't wait, wait to read their book, Harry Sylvester Bird. I want to get into that. Next on the list is Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. I want to let you guys know something before I start this wrap-up. Josiah deserves nothing, okay? period. Let's get into the book. Before I Let Go is the second chance romance between a divorcee couple and it kind of shows their story of how, why they got divorced, the process and the things that happened and how they rekindle their love. Kennedy did a brilliant job with the therapy sessions. I feel like that was very well researched. I think that even when Yasmin was like, oh, you know, I had to kind of shop around and find the right person for me, that rings very, very true. I love the fact that it wasn't just, just this unrealistic, like, hey, I got therapy and therapy solved all my problems. Like, therapy doesn't solve all your problems, but it helps you process and gives you understanding and as someone who's going through therapy myself I could relate to the characters sessions I love the parenting I love Deja though I had to check myself I said Liza you might need to you know get this out your system a little bit more because you don't understand how bad I wanted to jump in a book and knock this girl's head why are you your mother's up why are you your mother's up why are you your mother's opposition like it was it I, mm, I wasn't with it Vashti babe I didn't feel sorry for you you're going around with a divorced couple that are still like co-parenting and running a business together and the wife is in the business in the restaurant with you and you think you stood a chance baby be realistic be be serious with yourself because I don't feel sorry for you but um as you can tell this book I was live tweeting it it's so funny because I feel like the whole TL was reading this book the whole of social media I feel like we read this book especially black British Twitter I book Twitter we read this book at the same time okay and it was like a giant book club and it was so cute and I was in the DMs with my friends I low-key got cooked for one of the tweets <laughs> anywho um, but that's because Josiah was getting on my last nerve, guys. I don't think Josiah is a good person. I was going to give this book five stars, but I gave it four just on the basis of Josiah being a horrible, horrible husband. That man is a, he's a, you deserve nothing. You deserve nothing, okay? You are a horrible man. You're a horrible husband. I cannot. I cannot with Josiah. I'm not interested in whatever he's offering. Um, sorry, the book, I'm trying to figure out how the way to hold the book. But anyway, guys, as you can see how heated I am, you can tell I definitely enjoyed this book. If you are looking for an entryway into Kennedy Ryan's books, I would say Before I Let Go is a good entryway. I think that um, even after this, I'm going to read Real because I went to my book club chat and they were telling me that Real is a lot better in terms of... Um, her books so I said okay I'm gonna read real but yeah I'm literally a Kennedy Ryan stan I'm gonna read all her books um so I'm so excited and I can't wait and part two there's a there's a second book it's coming out soon period I can't wait I think it's called this could be us I'm gonna put a pic here or whatever listen as soon as that book drops we're gonna read it okay as I'm filming this today is the 
I think the 30th of January and I read Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe. Listen, guys, hoo, 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 hoo. the label that Achebe has been given as the father of modern African literature, may his soul rest in peace, it's more than fucking deserved, okay? It is more than deserved. He ate gobbled period. So in terms of a summary, Okonkwo is a wrestler living in his village and essentially we start to follow the path of how things fall apart and by things we mean him and also his town, his family, his community due to the effects of colonization. Now I finished reading this today. Um, at first I did struggle with it, okay? I got into it, I was like okay I have to read this. There's no way as an aspiring writer and as somebody who's championing um, by POC books and black lit and black classics I ain't reading Chinua Achebe and, and when I tell you I told the TL I said guys I'm struggling to read this book I'm struggling to understand it but that's because number one I should have read the blurb before I did not read the blurb <laughs> I didn't read the blurb properly and so I kind of was a bit lost in terms of what was going on but also um I feel like because I've noticed a lot of black classical writers or classic writers do this narrative thing where they start from before before. Um, Toni Morrison writes that way as well and I was a bit like trying to, okay what's the purpose of this, what's going on? Um, and me I love a fast paced book so. But as soon as it got to the point like 80 pages on, well the first 80 pages is built in the background so it will be a bit slow and not, I want to say hard for you to get into but a bit uh, but once you get past that, this book, oh, this is the definition of show not tell. When I, if you want an example of showing something and not telling it, perfect example because the fact that this is 150 pages and he was able to fit all of this in and the discourse he touches on mental health he touches on self-esteem um, masculinity um femininity the position of women and one thing i really did enjoy is because he didn't do that thing where i feel like some writers do when they write about colonization where it's just like oh the white man came in and everything went to shit it's like no pre-colonial african countries and african communities and Afri african indigenous cultures had their own customs their own systems that were in place you may look down on it you may not like it but it was theirs and it was in place the same way britain has its own um nigeria had its own and at the end of the day it was nice it was interesting i don't want to say it was nice to see because technically it's not but it was interesting to see his perspective and focus because his focus wasn't necessarily that all oh, white man came in and looked down on us and blah 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 but it's like the same terror and the same primitiveness that I feel like white colonizers engaged in when it came to how they perceived Nigerian um, cultures and pre-colonial cultures is kind of the same like babe you're calling um, Africans primitive but when you came to the country what were you doing? You were doing the same thing. You were doing the exact same thing. They would look like it would, uh, uh, this book five out of five man i'm so gagged and i have a video essay coming out on this um i've already started writing the script so i am very excited to delve into this just from my perspective and just for us to talk about it because why not next on the list is jazz by tony morrison i listened to this as an audiobook on spotify but just as like a frame of reference and for something to hold i'm holding the book now i got my copy from world of books secondhand i just have a personal thing where i feel like um I just like to get um, black classics secondhand. The only the only ones I haven't bought secondhand was Chinua and Chebe's collection, um, and that's because the covers were matching. So please don't judge me. Um, but anyway, I, honestly, Toni Morrison has these ones. Um, has these ones that match, and I'm trying to get all of them. So again, don't judge me. <laughs> anyway, um, Jazz follows the story of three people: Doc, Dorcas, Violet, and Joe. Now, Joe has an affair with Dorcas and it basically the book just follows the ripple effect of that. The effect on the community and the effect on Violet and other members of Dorcas's family. Now, personally, this was the first um, book I read slash listened to to get into Toni Morrison. I've tried to read Toni Morrison physically and for some reason, I, ju I just couldn't. I struggled to like for it to grip me um don't know how to explain that but when i listened to it on audiobook because she recorded it herself and it was her voice gagged i loved how she read it i loved the jazz blake playing in the background but generally i really loved it because i've actually added this to 
my list of books that have inspired me to write because I love how Tony used collective consciousness to kind of also talk about the characters and delve into their lives as well because not every character is reliable. <laughs> okay um and i loved how it discussed like one thing about morrison she will write about marriage she will write about women's position in society she will write about sexuality and she will write about a woman fucking somebody else's man okay <laughs> period um but i thoroughly enjoy this it is one of her easier reads um but i was gooped i was gagged and i love her like she is mother yeah next one i read was sula by tony morrison i listened to this on spotify audiobook and it is a powerful story about friendship between two girls sula and nell and it starts out going through the background of the characters the community um and then it kind of moves forward so they do the whole um tony does the whole narrative thing and then we get to the point where it's like okay so here's the background now here's what's going to happen now sula is an amazing read personally again i loved how morrison explores sexuality how she explores friendship how she explores community because one thing about tony her writing is very multi-layered i feel like she will have the themes of like the focus themes but then the wider theme will always be african-american life um their experiences how how the institutions around them in that time affects their lived experiences and even the discourse around the fact that the town was called the bottom who and like how everything happened um shadrach the character that experiences um shell shock and he basically promotes a day where everybody should commit suicide very very interesting in terms of narrative i thoroughly enjoyed this i will say um Morrison's book really encourages you to think outside of the individual interactions who or what is the real cause of the problem and I think the problem in this book was just patriarchy and how it affects women um I think Sula you wrong as hell okay Sula you mm, you, you should have apologized to Nell okay because at the end of the day while I understand what um Sula was trying to teach Nell it was Nell's world irregardless like but then I feel like I'm looking at it with a modern eye of like oh women have the choice because in this time women's choices were really limited and I think that women who stepped outside of what was expected of them by society were met with very harsh um social sanctions and it feels like everybody in that society or everybody in this book really put all this evil in Sula like they said she's the cause of everything and I'm not going to be like her and eventually I don't want to spoil it but yeah you guys really need to read Sula I think it's really good and I do think it's one of um, Morrison's easier reads as well um so yeah guys I gave this a five out of five I thoroughly enjoyed it I would really recommend this to people yeah. Last on the list was Songs of Solomon by Toni Morrison. It follows the story of Macon Milkman Dead the Third and his life. Now, um, it kind of starts out with him as a child and it again develops, goes through everything up until the point of his adulthood. Um, personally for me, I did not enjoy this as much as I enjoyed Sula and Jazz. Um, I just don't know. I think because it's a male character, I struggle to enjoy books where it's a male character. Um, I think sometimes it's just a bit meh for me. But um, I understood what um, Toni Morrison was trying to do with this book, highlighting how um, hard it is for black men to survive in white America and what it means for social mobility. And also, she also uses, while Macon is the centre, she also uses... Um, other characters to like talk about other things as usual um so we have one of the characters where she was a well-educated black woman but struggling to find someone to love or deal with relationships i feel like a lot of black women across the diaspora still deal with that today it's still a topic we talk about on the tl all the time which is mad because this book was written in the 70s imagine um and also there were just certain plot devices that morrison used that i didn't really enjoy like spoiler um just skip it a little bit if you don't want to hear this but spoiler alert um in one of them um macon hooks up with his cousin hagar um and their relationship is just a bit odd for me because why what happened that you did this because for Sula like when Sula did stuff I'm like okay that makes sense because I can see what happened before but for for Milkman I was just kind of like why are you why are you fiddling around with your cousin and then 
the fact that nobody else in the family did appropriate things to stop Hagar and like make Hagar was like not okay. Um, and I don't know if I've missed it. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think Hagar, Hagar's older. I think they're just around the same age range. So it's not as if it's in a, in an inappropriate relationship. Um, yeah, I didn't get that. Um, however, I do understand the wider themes of the book, the legacy of slavery, um, the struggle to achieve social mobility. Um, and it was interesting her drawing on the Yoruba folklore about Africans who can fly. As a Yoruba person, I don't know of that. I haven't heard of that. Um, I didn't Google it either because I'm just like, eh. It, it wasn't a good plot device for me. Which is interesting because Solomon was thicker, but Sula was not longer to listen to, but it felt slightly longer. But maybe... Oh. Maybe it's how they broke up the chapters. Um, but yeah, I just didn't enjoy Songs of Solomon as much, but I still understood what it was trying to do and what certain plot devices represented. While I did say there were some plot devices that I just did not like. Um or understand. So if you guys have any commentary about so Songs of Solomon, feel free to comment them down below. But I gave Songs of Solomon a 3.5 out of 5 because it's Morrison, baby. The book was still enjoyable. I just didn't like it um, in comparison to the way I liked Sula and Jazz. So guys, here's my conclusion for my monthly wrap up. Um, I really had a good reading month. I enjoyed the books that I chose to read. Um, I didn't DNF any books, which is a plus. Um, I've decided that with Toni Morrison's books, I'm probably just going to be using audiobooks for, for the rest of them or for all of them. I think that, however, I might try and read, do a live reading or like a physical copy um, as well. I think for Toni Morrison books, I might try and do a live reading of the physical copies that I do have. But I really did enjoy my reading month. Like, guys, I was gooped. I was gagged. Um... And I'll be go taking you guys through my TBR for February as well. That'll be in another video. That will be uploaded in the beginning of February. But yeah, guys, I really enjoyed this month. And please comment below um, your thoughts. Did you read these? Are you convinced? Do you want to read any other books that I that I have any of the books that I've talked about? And um, also with the format of the video, please comment and tell me your thoughts because um as much as I've written a script, uh, it's kind of hard to follow sometimes. So, yeah, please tell me. Give, feel free to give any feedback that you can. Um, but, yeah, guys, I read seven books this month. I'm going to put my um, story graph link. Make sure you follow me and keep up with what I got going on and what I'm reading. So, yeah, guys, see you next month. Bye.